here's the thing. So I was a very late bloomer in the, you know, sexual escapades department. Yes, I know. I know I'm a bit of a sexual tyrannosaurus now. But back then, back then, I was more on the short bus of sex. It did not happen. My first real girlfriend didn't pop up until, well, I mean, I had popped up a long time before then. But she didn't pop up and... I like that noise. She didn't pop up until I was 19. 19, mind you. A late bloomer. Now, I tried. I tried to sow my seed as much as I possibly can at that point. Up until that, not so much. But the reason I say that, she was a preacher's daughter. Yes, she was. It's strange. I start with a preacher's daughter, and then later on, I'm with a stripper. And this girl... What's interesting, and that's today's topic, you can't have two masters. I was dating her. I'm in Kentucky, mind you, and we do things a little backwards in Kentucky. No, she was not a cousin or a sister or a brother or anything like that. She 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 was a very good girl. Her dad was a preacher. So her dad and her mom had informed me through her, hey, you're going to date my daughter. You're going to come down here and sit down and talk to me so I know who the hell you are. Okay, so travel over to this girl. Her name was Christy. Travel and, and see Christy, and her dad was a coal miner. So he was getting off work that evening, and, and finally he gets off work, and he comes in. He's covered with coal dust, and you can tell he's been working hard and everything like that. And he sits down, and he starts to talk with me. And he's like, son. I was like, yes, sir. He's like, do you go to church? And I was like, every now and then. He's like, well, if you're going to date my daughter. You are going to go to church. Yes, sir. I'll be at church every Sunday. Church is also on Wednesdays. I'll be at church every Sunday and Wednesday. Then he looks at me. He's like, you can only have one master. So I want to ask you a question. I was like, yeah. He's like, are you a servant of God or are you a servant of Satan? And I looked at him. I was like, I didn't say it out loud, mind you. But I thought to myself, that is a fucking trick question right there. So I sat there. Now, the thing is, if you tell somebody that you are a servant of God and then you've just told the man that you don't go to church and blah, 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 probably he ain't going to believe that. If you tell the man that you are a servant of Satan, he might believe that, but he ain't going to like your ass more than likely. And I said it. I didn't even hesitate. I was like, I am a servant of Satan. Not that I like it. And he looks at me. He's like. That's a good answer. And I was like, well, I'm glad that it was a good answer. While I dated Christy, dated Christy for five years and went to church every Wednesday and Sunday and got a very good education in the book and the denomination as well. And he was a very good man. He was. He was a very good man. Her mom was a very good woman. She acted like a surrogate mother for me. They were outstanding people. The reason I say that and I tell you that story, is because of this idea that you really cannot serve two masters. You can't. And I apply that to my life, not just in dating this 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 girl and going to church and a servant of God versus Satan, blah, blah, blah. I I I I applied that that lesson in my life with criminal activity. Okay. Because I was a criminal for decades decades. When I decided to turn my life around, I made that conscious decision because I knew, and and here's the thing, I could go back and and do any numbers of frauds right now and make a veritable shit ton of money. I don't want to do that because I've changed my life. When I, when I, when I actually made the decision to, to turn things around and I was being given help by countless people at the same time, I understood, even back then, I understood that, hey, if you are serious about turning your life around, that means that you can no longer dabble in the behaviors that you used to dabble in, that you are only going to serve one master. Because if I'm doing things right and then moonlighting at the same time as a criminal or a fraudster or something like that, that makes me a hypocrite. And it means that I'm not fully convicted to this path that I have chosen because I've got a fail safe all of a sudden. I've got something I can fall back on, that history of criminal activity that I had before. So that's the lesson that I think that, that people have to get is that if you are dedicated to something, 
if you are trying to change your life, um, you know, whatever is going on, maybe you're addicted, maybe you've been abused, maybe you are the abuser, um, maybe you've, you're engaged in criminal activity and you want to change things, I want you to change things too. I do. But understand that that change means that you have to give up the people, places, and things that you were doing that causes you to want to change. You cannot, you cannot simply go back and visit every now and then because as Thomas Wolfe once said, you can't go home again. You're going to fuck up unless you decide a path, stick to that path, and then go from there. And that is today's Art of Accountability. Thank you.